Welcome to China In Focus, I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, an FDA alert for all American hospitals immediately stop using plastic syringes made in China. That's after reports of quality issues that could have fatal consequences. U.S. water security under threat. Officials warn that cyber attacks from China and Iran could impact clean drinking water. India marks the grand opening of a new strategic tunnel right next to its disputed border with China, while Washington makes a show of support. And is China cashing in on America's rare earth mining while U.S. taxpayers pick up the tab? The answer is yes, according to our guest. More on how the U.S. government's green energy initiatives might just be greasing the wheels. China can backdoor us uh, by simply investing in these companies uh, and then these companies are winning these contracts at, at the expense of the U.S. taxpayer. Before we turn to today's top story, we'd like to share an announcement about our special coverage this Saturday. The New York Times has for nearly six months been preparing a hit piece against Xinyan Performing Arts. That's what NTD's sister media, The Epic Times, has learned. What's behind The Epic Times' investigation and why did The New York Times decide to target Xinyan? They've been very eager to expand their presence, to penetrate the Chinese markets, to somehow get their product there. Even when they had a tribunal in the UK, proving that the Chinese Communist Party is harvesting the organs from living Falun Gong practitioners and selling them for profit, the New York Times blocked the story. That's this Saturday at 11 a.m. on NTD or at 9.30 p.m. on Epic TV. An alert for all U.S. hospitals and healthcare providers immediately stop using plastic syringes made in China unless absolutely necessary. The Food and Drug Administration sent out the warning Tuesday. That's after it found quality issues in Chinese-made plastic syringes that could be fatal. The problems don't extend to glass syringes or pre-filled syringes. The FDA sent warning letters to three Chinese companies for selling plastic syringes that haven't been approved. The move comes after customers' reports of faulty ones. The biggest problem, some physicians delivered incorrect doses of vaccines because the syringe measurements weren't accurate. It's a potentially fatal quality issue because syringes are widely used in medical procedures, from cancer treatments to anesthesia. In addition, some Chinese syringes had cracks in them and leaked. Others had their needles break off inside the veils when physicians drew up medications. In one case, customers found foreign matter in the syringes. The U.S. is the world's largest syringe importer, with China and Mexico among its top suppliers. Right now, only two large-scale syringe makers are left in the U.S., one in Nebraska, the other one in Connecticut. A few others closed their doors during the pandemic because it was cheaper to source products from China. One of those two remaining companies is ramping up production after the FDA warning. Becton Dickinson makes medical equipment and is one of the world's largest syringe suppliers. The FDA probe into faulty Chinese plastic syringes is ongoing. The agency said shifting away from China isn't likely to lead to shortages, as supplies from other countries and at home are enough to support current demand. An official warning over the vulnerability of drinking water systems. Cyber attacks from China and Iran could paralyze the safety and availability of drinking water in the U.S. The Biden administration is warning state governors about the danger. A letter this week says disabling cyber attacks are striking water and wastewater systems throughout the United States. It singled out two hacker groups from China and Iran. The Chinese hacking group, dubbed Volt Typhoon, compromised a critical infrastructure network and held on to hidden access into the system for at least five years. The letter called on governors to prepare for potential cyber attacks by ensuring that all water systems review their cybersecurity practices. India is cutting the ribbon on a high-altitude tunnel through the Himalayas. Some parts of the structure reach as high as 13,000 feet. New Delhi says it's designed to enhance defensibility and be ready for all-weather access to its shared border with China. That's in the face of increasing tensions with Beijing. The U.S. weighed in on the issue on Wednesday, making a show of support for India, its strategic partner.
the United States recognizes Arunachal Pradesh as Indian territory, and we strongly oppose any unilateral attempts to advance territorial claims by incursions or encroachments, military or civilian, uh, across the line of actual control. Construction on the project is now complete. It's called the Sila Tunnel and took nearly four years to complete. That's due to a number of engineering challenges. Indian Prime Minister Modi visited the site earlier this month. It's located in one of the two major disputed regions. Both China and India claim them. The Chinese Foreign Ministry released a statement about the project one day after Washington's endorsement, saying Beijing firmly opposes it and telling Washington to stay out of the matter. Washington recognizes India as a vital partner in Asia, especially for protecting peace in the Indo-Pacific region. On top of that, both China and India are nuclear-armed powers. The heated border issues between the two remain a key issue, especially after a clash between troops on the two sides led to deaths in 2020. Sparks are flying in the South China Sea. China and the Philippines are clashing yet again in the region, with Philippine officials saying Friday that a Chinese Coast Guard ship tried to block Filipino vessels from doing scientific research with help from a military chopper. The face-off took place on Thursday on sandbars just off the coast of a Manila-controlled island. Beijing claimed its officers arrived and dealt with the situation. But Manila says that's not what happened. It's accusing the Chinese regime about lying about the event and saying Filipino scientists successfully conducted a four-hour-long research trip as witnessed by on-site media. Territorial disputes between China and its neighbors over the South China Sea are rising. Washington has said it's closely watching the situation. Some are concerned the frequent face-offs could turn into a major confrontation between the U.S. and China. Could China be reaping the benefits of America's lithium gold mine while American taxpayers foot the bill? Canadian lithium producer Lithium Americas has been awarded mining rights in America, though its largest shareholder is the Chinese-based Ganfeng Lithium Company. We sat down with Rex Lee, security advisor at MySmart Privacy, to discuss. Rex Lee, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thank you for having me on the show. Now, you were just at Sura Week recently. Help us understand the significance of Lithium Americas being awarded mining rights in the United States at Thacker Pass, this is in Nevada, and the involvement of GM and Genfeng Lithium Co., especially in light of the foreign investments and ties to China. Lithium Americas was awarded the bid back in uh, 2020. Uh, and they had outbidded Ford and Tesla and another lithium company to get the mining rights in Thacker Pass, Nevada. The problem is at the time that uh, the deal was approved, Gan Feng Lithium Company LTD out of uh, China was the majority shareholder in Lithium Americas. So uh, you can kind of see how this has uh, become a huge issue. There was close to a trillion dollars set aside for green energy initiatives through both the uh, Inflation Reduction Act and the omnibus bills of 2022. Now, th this money is important in particular because it's U.S. payer tax, it's, it's U.S. taxpayer money. Uh, and, the, and the money um, we're told by the politicians and the people who sponsored the, the bill and passed the bill, uh, we were told that the money was supposed to be used for the United States and U.S. companies so that the U.S. can lead the way in green energy production, distribution, manufacturing, and sell around the world. That's what the money was used for. Yet we're coming to find out that uh, foreign companies, as long as they're uh, associated with NAFTA, meaning that the company is headquartered in uh, the United States, Mexico, or Canada, that foreign companies from Canada or Mexico who are uh, developing uh, green energy products and services or are innovating and developing as well as manufacturing green energy products and services can apply for IRA funds, uh, which uh, uh, Lithium Americas out of Canada had done. However, what we're finding out is that uh, they still have are, are there, there's still the ability for foreign investors to invest in these com companies, and they can be from anywhere in the world, such as in India, Germany, or even China or Russia. And that, again, uh, is in great contradiction to what Dan Sullivan had said in regards to energy independence, 
uh, meaning uh, e equaling uh, energy security as well as national security. How does this practice affect the U.S. national security and national interests? Are there any steps being done to address that? This affects us tremendously. Uh, there's, there's a lot of ability for these countries to now leverage us through energy, meaning that if Taiwan, let's say in the future, China attacks Taiwan and the U.S. Uh, goes to defend Taiwan, then China can then leverage us through critical infrastructure supply chain, meaning lithium. China can backdoor us uh, by simply investing in these companies, uh, and then these companies are winning these contracts at, at the expense of the U.S. taxpayer. So you got to wrap your head around this and understand that the U.S. taxpayer is just now um, uh, finding out that they paid $2.6 billion to Lithium Americas, who's mining the, the minerals uh, and elements such as lithium here in the United States. Now that has to be refined and most lithium refining has to go back through China. Rex Lee, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. You might have noticed how Top Gun Maverick attempted to strip the Taiwanese and Japanese flags off of Tom Cruise's jacket, or how Iron Man 3 inserted a Chinese doctor into the movie who saves the life of Tony Stark. Is it artistic license or something more sinister? These are the issues explored in the groundbreaking new documentary, Hollywood Takeover, China's Control in the Film Industry. The NTD original film pulls back the curtain on how Hollywood is helping to further a global adversary's agenda, the consequences that will have on America's future, and what brave individuals are doing to change the tide. The documentary is now available to stream on Epic TV. And for more information about the documentary, please visit HollywoodTakeover.com. There's something magical about the movies that I just love. Hollywood invented America to the world in the old days. And as a medium, it's really powerful. But for some, that power isn't used for good. Our way of life is being censored by the Chinese Communist Party. They said, we get a lot of our money out of China. Is there any way you could make this movie a little bit more attractive to the Chinese? Is it really just about money? Are there other parts at stake? I had friends in Hollywood who said, this will kill your career. You won't get funding. They're afraid of even mentioning one line. Chinese influence was playing into what we see in U.S. films. China said, you can't have that in there. And Hollywood listened. This is insane. This is a joke, right? We raised our hand and we dove right into it. But over time, all of us have been punched in the nose. The Chinese Communist Party followed no rules. What's at stake? The soul of the nation is at stake. We want indoctrination access to America. They could basically take over America without firing a shot because they control access to our minds. And we all know that their goal is global domination. People have been brainwashed without knowing it. Coming up, sanctioned Chinese chipmaker SMIC might have violated U.S. export rules. That's by helping Chinese telecom giant Huawei illegally obtain American technology. The New York Times is under scrutiny for following the Chinese regime's narrative when it comes to Beijing's persecution of Falun Gong. Our guest walks us through the newspaper's track record on this issue. New York Times did nothing of that depth and caliber. They like underground investigation. And most of their story on Falun Gong were driven by some of the CCP statement or some of the highly visible protests. How does Beijing manipulate global supply chains and then wield that influence as leverage? A new hearing on Capitol Hill is focused on countering China and empowering U.S. businesses. More on that after the break here on China in Focus. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform Epic TV where you can watch our full episodes. Just click the link down below. Here's what to look out for in our second half.
Sanctioned Chinese chipmaker SMIC might have violated U.S. export rules. That's by helping Chinese telecom giant Huawei illegally obtain American technology. The New York Times is under scrutiny for following the Chinese regime's narrative when it comes to Beijing's persecution of Falun Gong. Our guest walks us through the newspaper's track record on this issue. The New York Times did nothing of that depth and caliber. They like underground investigation, and most of their story on Falun Gong were driven by some of the CCP statement or some of the highly visible protests. How does Beijing manipulate global supply chains and then wield that influence as leverage? A new hearing on Capitol Hill is focused on countering China and empowering U.S. businesses. More on that after the break here on China in Focus. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you soon.